Well, a very good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's wonderful to see you, and a, a special welcome to those who are joining us online too. It's wonderful that we're able to gather together in fellowship together to, to worship God and to praise the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Um, a couple of rules for us while we're here in the building today. Um, if you could keep a two-meter distance apart from each other whilst we're here, that's the, the single most easy way to make sure that we stay safe. And also, um, if you develop COVID symptoms while you're here, you need to let me know. We're here to worship God and uh, to praise the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 104 says, Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. The King of creation O my soul, praise him For he is thy health and salvation Come ye here, brothers and sisters Draw near, praise him in glad adoration Praise to the Lord, who o'er all things so wondrously reigneth. Bears thee on eagles' wings, and through all trouble sustaineth. Hast thou not seen, all that is needful hath been granted, in what he ordaineth. Praise to the Lord, who doth prosper thy work, and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew he can do, who with his love doth befriend All that is in me adore him All that hath life and breath Come now with praises before him Let the Amen Sound from his people again Gladly for a we adore Let's pray. Almighty God, we come to worship you and to praise you because you are a, a wonderful God. It is a, a joy and delight to know you and your presence with us. We bow down in adoration. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. We open our hearts to you and we give you our thanks and praise for the way in which you have sustained us, the way in which you have led and guided us, shared with us your love and your truth, your wisdom and grace in these last days.
Lord God, we praise you. And pray that you would accept all of our worship today in our hearts, our minds, our souls. We thank you for the wonderful gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who welcomes us, who forgives us, who through his death on the cross brings grace and mercy to us so that we can come right into your presence inside now. And we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, restoring and renewing, moving amongst us. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you would speak into our hearts and lives this day as we look at the Word, your truth, Come, Holy Spirit, have your way amongst us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, in our midweek services, we are looking at some of the parables that Jesus told in the gospel accounts. And we're starting a new focus for our morning services this week that complement that. If our midweek services are about those, those parables and some of the things that Jesus says, then our Sunday services are going to focus on some of the things that are recorded in the Gospels for us that Jesus did, some of his actions and his ministry. And as we look at this, perhaps we'll see ways in which Jesus wants us to work and how Jesus wants to work and act in today's world too. And we're going to start at this morning Uh, Thinking about fish. That's what this morning's reading is all about. And Ian's going to share our reading from Luke chapter 5 for us. Thanks, Ian. One day as Jesus was standing by Lake Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. When he saw at the water's edge two boats, he left uh, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one one of the boats belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll fish for people. So they pulled up their boats on the shore and left everything and followed him. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Ian. Who would, uh, who would try running a business these days, eh? It was a question that Simon had asked himself often recently. It was a pretty tough time. The Roman tax system was crippling everyone. No one had any money to buy his fish. Certainly not at the price it was worth. No one wanted to pay the going rate. But um, occasionally people would offer him some mouldy stale bread for some of the fish that he would have normally thrown out. Simon worked hard and scraped by. Everyone was in the same boat. At least he could always feed his family, of course. But then a few weeks ago, Simon had noticed a bit of a change. His his nightly catches were a little less, and the fish he did catch... Well, they were a bit smaller, really. Something had happened in the lake. It had been the talk of the town. That and Jesus. He was a good man. Simon had seen it himself. Healed his own mother-in-law so that she could add her complaints to how the fish weren't what they used to be. 
Not that Simon could do anything about it. All he could do was keep fishing. Night after night, he would head out in the boat, hoping, praying, longing that it would be different this time. If he was honest, he was, he was down. He was quite depressed. And fishing was tough work when you caught very little. The nets having to be thrown out and then hauled back. With few fish, the nets would often get caught. They'd snag and need mending once they were free. Every half an hour or so, the nets were cast out. And then you'd wait. Then haul them back in again and start again. As he sat in his boat this night, it was, as always, eerily quiet and pitch black. So far he had caught nothing, not a single goldfish to take home. He'd spent two hours untangling the net when it had got caught on something, and he'd tried everywhere on the lake, and everything, all the tricks in the book, everything his father had taught him, he'd tried, everything. He'd never known anything like it. The hours passed. Simon was either hauling nets or sat waiting in the oppressive silence and darkness, wondering what on earth he was going to do. He found nights like this worse than sleepless ones, really. After what had seemed like an endless night, the first speck of greyness appeared on the horizon. Time usually for two more nets. Come on, surely there must be something in this lake. The grey got brighter, and grew into a bright, fiery orange, beginning to fill the sky. If there were any fish left in this lake, they'd be scurrying off to bed now. Nothing. Nothing. The night was over. Not a single fish. Simon was a fisherman who could no longer catch fish. How embarrassing is that? If he was lucky, he'd be able to sneak the boat in, wash the nets, keep away from all of his companions and head home without anyone seeing him much. And so he made his way back to shore, feeling the heat already on his back as the morning grew on. He pulled the boat up onto the narrow beach and threw his nets into the shallow water. They were in a right state, those nets, covered in muck and slime everywhere. He set to work washing each line and not as he pulled it up out of the water and back into the boat. And as he did, he was going around in his head, no fish. I'm a fisherman who can't fish. Simon was so focused and lost in his thoughts that he hadn't seen the first few people arrive. He looked up with a bit of a start when he saw them, and there was, there was suddenly people everywhere. His initial thought was, oh no, news was out. They'd come to laugh at the fishermen who couldn't fish. As Simon took in the scene, though, the, the, the gathering crowd, he realized, actually, after a few moments, that he wasn't the center of their attention. Actually, as he watched his net, they were oblivious to what he was doing. The only person Simon knew who could draw a crowd this size at this time in the morning was Jesus. And sure enough, he soon came into view. Not wanting to draw any attention to himself, but not able to escape either, Simon just carried on with his nets. The crowd gathered around the beach in quiet, listening to Jesus. As Jesus himself came first down onto the beach, slowly the crowd grew and grew. Folk edged closer to Jesus on the beach. And even now, right up to Simon's boat, But Simon, he just carried on washing his nets. Suddenly, as Simon was lifting the next section of the net out of the water onto the boat, the bolt jolted, and his temper was ready to boil over after a fruitless night. He was about to tell whoever it was to shove off out of his boat. When a glance, he saw that it was was Jesus who was in his boat. Hi, Simon. Could you take me just a a little offshore? Simon looked. He said nothing. 
the crowd's eyes were kind of staring at him or Jesus or both of them. With a slight... <laughs> oh, it was quite loud, wasn't it? <laughs> With a slight... <laughs> Simon lifted the rest of the net into the boat. He went round to one end and he pushed them out into the shallow water. Standing, Jesus directed Simon, come a bit further this way, a bit more, a bit more, there, there. Until he was right in the middle of the bay, the beach running round them, full of people. So Simon jumped in and he sat at one end. Jesus sat down in the middle. Simon just staring at his own feet, waiting for the moment when he would become the teaching analogy. He'd seen Jesus do this so many times before with others. He would tell everyone that Simon was a fisherman who couldn't fish, and then there would be a moral to the story, and everybody would go home happy. As Jesus talked, though, that moment never came. Jesus was talking God and his kingdom. Simon, Simon wasn't really listening. Kept kind of zoning in and out, you know, like you do. But he knew it was the first time in ages he could just he could just stop for a moment. Stop thinking, stop worrying, stop complaining, stop being frustrated. As the water just lapped against the side of the boat, Simon found himself at peace. Jesus speaking, the crowd listening. Simon zoned in again when he sensed Jesus was concluding. And within a few moments, Jesus had dismissed the crowd and had turned to face Simon from the other end of the boat. Not that the crowd were going anywhere, of course. Simon looked up. He and Jesus held each other's gaze for a moment. And Jesus said to him, Put out into the water. And let down the nets for a catch. Simon for a moment just stared back. He began fighting back the tears in his eyes. Master, we've worked hard all night. And haven't caught anything. He'd admitted it. And he kept looking at Jesus. He just gave him that look that said, I know, and I mean it. It'll be okay. Simon looked him straight in the eye and continued somehow finding himself saying, but because you say so, I'll let down the nets. Within a few minutes, they were in the scorching mid-morning sun out on the lake, deep enough to catch fish, close enough to the shore to still see the crowd drifting away. Simon couldn't help but think that there would be some in that crowd who were laughing at putting the nets out. At this time, it was coffee time, not fishing time. Simon looked at Jesus. Here? Jesus shrugged. Nodded. The nets went down and within a moment Simon knew. He hadn't felt fish in the nets like this for such a long time. He could see them. It was like all the fish in Lake Galilee were suddenly scrabbling and fighting to get into his net. Simon called to the other fishermen that he could see on the shore. Help, come on, bring your boat. Jesus rolled up his sleeves too, lifting up the nets with Simon. When the other boat pulled by, they couldn't believe what they could see. The boats were both filled to the brim with fish and they slowly made their way back to the shore. The boat sat so low in the water, the rim was just about at water level. As the boat first ground, they jumped out of the boats and there in the shallow water, Simon fell on his knees in front of Jesus. Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Jesus just kept walking through the shallow water and up the now deserted beach. He looked back over his shoulder, back at Simon and his companions. Don't be afraid, he said with a big smile on his face and a little skip in his step. From now on, you're going to fish for people. 
Jesus beckoned them to follow. Well, Simon got up from the water. He looked at the fish in the boat. He looked at his friends, his dripping clothes, and he wiped the sweat off his brow. With a couple of heaves, they pulled the boat far enough on the shore to be safe. People could just help themselves if they wanted it. Simon ran up the beach to catch up with Jesus. He hadn't gone far. Because Jesus was expecting him. Come with me, come wander, come welcome the world. Where strangers might smile, or where stones might be hurled. Come leave what you cling to, lay down what you clutch, and find with hands empty that hearts can hold much. Sing hey for the carpenter leaving his tools. Sing hey for the Pharisees leaving their rules. Sing hey for the fishermen leaving their nets sing hey for the people who leave their regrets come walk in my company come sleep by my side Come savor a lifestyle with nothing to hide. Come sit at my table and eat with my friends, discovering that love which the world never ends. Sing hey for the carpenter leaving his tools. Sing hey for the Pharisees leaving their rules. Sing hey for the fishermen leaving their nets. Sing hey for the people who leave their regrets. Come share in my laughter Come close to my fears Come find yourself washed With the kiss of my tears Come stand close at hand While I suffer and die And find in three days How I never will lie Sing hey for the carpenter Leaving his tools Sing hey for the Pharisees leaving their rules. Sing hey for the fishermen leaving their nets. Sing hey for the people who leave their regrets. Come leave your possessions. Come share out your treasure, come give and receive without method or measure. Come loose every bond that's resisting the spirit, enabling the earth to be yours to inherit. Sing hey for the carpenter leaving his tools. Sing leaving their rules. Sing hey for the fishermen leaving their nets. Sing hey for the people who leave their regrets. In, uh, in this series, we're, we're thinking about what, what Jesus does. And this story is astounding for all kinds of reasons, isn't it? I think we often miss the thing with the fish. 
Um, because I don't know about you, but I'm always a little suspicious and a little taken aback that in an instant, the fishermen leave everything to follow Jesus. And my attention is kind of drawn to that bit of the story. I mean, at the very least, there's going to be a public health crisis when all those fish are just left lying around in the sun. So if this were to happen today, what would, what would this be like? If Jesus were to do this today? Well, I, I wonder whether you can join me on another story. Think about, think about Katie. Katie is a nurse. She has no idea what's been going on these last couple of years. She's absolutely exhausted. She's running on empty and has dealt with things she never expected to have had to cope with. And this week she's, she's on nights, and they're really quite long nights. As case rates rise again, so she can see it all happening again, and Katie really doesn't know whether she can do it. This night, as everyone else is asleep, she has watched helpless as folks struggle to breathe. And just before dawn, she sits at the side of another who breathes their last. As it happens more frequently, she realizes it's just become normal. And Katie searches her heart for a motivation. Is, is she a nurse? Is she a nurse who, who no longer cares? The thought goes round in her head as she finishes her shift and in the car on the way home. When she gets in, she slumps in the chair just for a moment as a cup of tea, takes a deep breath. Within a few moments, she's back up. She's sticking her clothes in the wash. She's packing her bag for the next shift. So she's all set, ready to go once she's had a rest. Just for a moment in these kind of ordinary jobs, in the silence, she's aware of God surrounding her and holding her. She has a moment of quiet just in the house. Not saying, thinking or doing anything really, just knowing that Christ is with her. A moment with no anxiety or worry. Suddenly, her mobile phone rings. Uh, Katie answers it. It's her boss. Katie, we're so short-staffed. I wouldn't normally ask, but is there, is there any chance you could come back and do another six hours for us? Katie hears herself saying down the phone, I've worked hard all night. I'm exhausted after that shift. She pauses and remembers the sense of Christ with her. And in prayer to him, she says down the phone, but because you say so, I'll get my stuff together. I'll see you in half an hour. Katie sets off back to the hospital. This is not what I had in mind, Jesus. This is not what I had in mind. Katie changes and heads back onto the ward. But suddenly the place, the place feels different. It is different. As she heads around the ward, well, there's the sound of laughter. Patients are smiling. Breathing apparatus is now just hung up idle. The people she saw struggling just a few hours ago are sat up reading the paper, watching the telly, and having their breakfast. The doctor does their round. They're astonished. They call more doctors to come and look. They look at each person in turn, and every one of them is well, is strengthened, is restored. They're healed. They can all go home. Every one of them. Katie doesn't know what is happening or what to do. There aren't enough registrars to do the paperwork. She knows that for sure. Slowly, though, the wards are empty as folk go home. And news is that it's the same on every single ward in the hospital. Within three hours, the entire hospital is empty. Not a single patient. There's no illness anywhere. Katie drops to her knees. Go away from me, Lord. I'm sinful. As she knelt there on her knees in the middle of an empty hospital ward, Jesus says to her, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll heal the world. Jesus und uh, Katie undid her PPE apron. She threw it in the bin, headed out the door, running after Jesus. He hadn't gone far. He was expecting her.
Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know, never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Well, friends, I'd, um, I'd forgive you if you were thinking that that were a little far-fetched. Hospitals don't empty in the space of three hours because everyone is healed, and definitely not during a pandemic. And yes, for the avoidance of doubt, Katie's story was completely made up. You can't sell the story to the paper. It just won't work. But isn't the ridiculousness of it actually part of the point? Because miracles are far-fetched, aren't they? In fact, by definition, miracles are far-fetched. That's what they are. That's the whole point. And miracles are just what Jesus does. I reckon, actually, that the miraculous catch of fish for Simon that morning would have been on the same scale of ridiculousness as my story about Katie. And yet, Simon's story actually happened. Simon really did walk away from all those fish. And I think Jesus really does want to do things like that around here today. Far-fetched or not, don't you want to see Jesus actually do incredible things today and now? I mean, not just read about them or learn about them or even see something good that happens in the world and claim that that's Jesus, but him actually do stuff. I'm interested and longing and waiting and hoping and praying that the Lord Jesus would do some of the, the far-fetched, ridiculously wonderful, life-changing miracles around here in our lives, in our town and our community. This summer, in the next few weeks, I want to see Jesus break into this world with his power and his love. I've been really struck as I've grappled with this passage this week in how Simon responded to Jesus. You might have noticed it in the way that I picked things out of the stories. When Jesus asked him after a fishless night to head back out and lower the nets, Simon said, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. In that little sentence, Simon acknowledges that something is different when Jesus says. Because he's not actually going to go and do anything different to what he's already been doing all night, is he? He's going to do exactly the same thing. The only difference is now, Jesus has said. Simon could, of course, at this point, have said all kinds of other things in response. Master, we've worked hard all night. I've just cleaned my nets. I'm not going back out there again now. I'm going tomorrow. And if you want to come with me, that's great. I'll be here at 10 o'clock tonight. Oh, Master, we've worked hard all night and not caught anything. We definitely won't catch anything now. It's daytime and the crowd have made this racket. Jesus, how's the carpentry going? Shouldn't you stick to that? 
Master, we've worked hard all night. But do you know what? I'm done with fishing. Can't you see I'm a fisherman who can no longer fish? Here, feel free, take the boat. Go and fish yourself, but I'm not going. Not that we would ever say similar to Jesus, would we? But Simon's statement, I just wonder, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing. It sounds to me as if it were the start of an excuse, but it turns into an acknowledgement that working hard, wanting it to happen, longing, exhausting yourself, well, at least we tried. Simon realizes doing it alone will only get you so far. But since you say so, Jesus, we'll go again, back into the water, letting the nets down. It'll be different if you say, Jesus. So friends, what is Jesus saying to you today and now? As we sit a little while in this boat, just a little way out. The crowd all think that Jesus needs the boat as a pulpit. Yet you and I, we both know we need this moment just with Jesus Jesus, take us to one side now, out from the crowds, the doubts, the fears, the anxieties, and the worries. Just your presence. Let us assess where we are. We've worked hard all night. We've worked hard all of our lives. There's been good days and bad, successes and failures along the way. What's it all for? Where do we go from here? What am I here for? out into deep water again. Come on, says Jesus, let's, let's go. With me. Out into the world. Into your home and workplace. All the same places. College, school, community, neighborhood, town and world. Let down the nets for a catch. Let's do this. With me right there with you. Yes, in that difficult place, that fruitless place, in the loneliness and the tiredness and the, well, here are my 25 excuses why this isn't going to work places. Where relationships are broken and where illnesses ravish and where lies hurt and people scheme, where everything is hard work and nothing seems right. Here? Yes. Master, we've worked so hard at that. But because you say so, Jesus, I'll let down the nets. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence with us now, the way you have brought us to this moment and this time, to hear from your word and to hear you speaking into our lives. Lord Jesus, in the quiet, speak the word we need to hear, that encouragement. Lord Jesus, so even though there's so much more going on in the world, the crowds are gathering, there's people listening, ignoring and sharing with you, we thank you that in this moment we're the center of your attention and you have nothing but love and grace and mercy for us. Lord God, I want to thank you for each person here today, each of those watching at home on YouTube. 
Lord Jesus, grant us the faith and the trust that we need to be able to follow you all the days of our lives. Give us the hope and the encouragement that we might see you do wonderful things. Lord Jesus, we look forward to what you have in store for us in this next week. And so, Lord Jesus, as we go from here in a few moments, may we know that we go with your presence as we offer ourselves to love and serve you once more. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Lord, be forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side, nor wander from the pathway if thou wilt be my guide. Feel you near me, the world is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus, now draw nearer and shield my soul from sin. speaking in accents clear and still above the storms of passion the murmurs of self-will or speak to reassure me to hasten or control Lord speak and make me listen O guardian of my soul Jesus, you have promised to all who follow you that where you are in glory, your servant shall be too. And Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. And so may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Go on. Follow Jesus. He hasn't gone far. He's expecting you. <laughs>